good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. We come to praise the Lord today. Come on, somebody. You know how good he's been. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. Come on, I know somebody got it. Praise and get it, Lord. He's so good. He's better than us than what we are to ourselves. Come on. I know somebody got to praise. Yes, yes, the Lord has been good. He keeps us. Yes, he does. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes. He's sweet, I know. Storm clouds may rise, strong winds may blow, I'll tell the world wherever I go, I have found a Savior, and he's sweet, I know. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. He's so sweet. He's so kind. He's so wonderful. Ah, Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. And right now, Lord, we, we want to just come into prayer. Lord, we thank you for bringing us over the highways and the byways once again. We thank you for bringing us all together to sing your praise, to give you your praise you so rightfully deserve. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Jesus loves me. Ah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for giving me legs to walk and a voice to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful, so awesome, Lord. We just want to thank you today. Praise you, worship you. Yes. Yes. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever. For all you done, you done for me. Mm, blessing and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I just want to thank you. Once again, we come to, before you, Lord, and we just want to welcome you into this place, oh God. Hallelujah. We welcome your presence, oh God. We kiss your presence, oh God. We desire you, oh God, to just fill this place to, so we can hardly stand it, oh God. And maybe not even able, be able to stand. We, 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 we want you to fill this place with the presence, the smoke of your presence, oh God, today, oh God. We pray, Father God, oh Lord, for this, for for your 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 presence. We pray for this waiting congregation, oh God, that you would be with us and, and have your way with us. 
as you will. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we, amen. Now we'll receive our, our praise team. Amen. Deacon Donald got us stirred up this morning, huh? got us ready, hallelujah, to do the devotionals. Yes, he huh? did, too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon Donald. I tell you, I like your zeal. Hallelujah. No to God be the glory. Huh? Yes. What can wash, wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No, 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 no. no other found I know. Nothing, Nothing but the blood of blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus oh, oh precious is the flow that makes me quiet no, 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 no. blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Thank you. Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. That can wash me. Yes. White as snow. Huh? Yes. Down at the, the cross, cross where my Savior, Savior died. Oh, down, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, I am, I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, Jesus. So sweetly abide with there at the cross, there at the cross where he took me in. I'm singing glory to his name. Glory, 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 glory to his name, precious name. I'm singing glory to Come to the 
fountain so rich and sweet. Oh, cast thy poor souls at the Savior's feet. Just try Plunge into day and be made complete. I'm singing glory to his name. Singing glory, glory, glory to his name. Precious name. I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name. Oh, led to my heart. Was the blood applied? I'm singing glory to His name. Singing glory, glory, glory to His name. Precious name. Glory, glory to His name. Precious name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Singing glory, glory, glory to his name. Precious name. I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Only your blood can wash away our sins. And because of that, we sing glory to your name. And we know it was the blood. Huh? It was the blood. We know it was the blood for me. Amen. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, yeah. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know. And I know it was the blood for me. I know, I know, I know. I know it was the blood. I know it. And I know it was the blood. I know it. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, yeah. So one day when I was lost, oh, Jesus he died on the cross. I know. And I know it was the blood. For me, they pierced him. Yes, they did. They pierced him in his side. Yes, they did. They pierced him in his side. Oh, yes, they, they pierced him in his side. For me, oh, yeah. One day when I was lost, Jesus he died on the cross. I know. And I know it was the blood for me. He never, he never, he never. He never said a mumbling word. He never, he never said a mumbling word. He never, he never said a mumbling word for me. Oh, yeah. One day when I was lost, Jesus, he died on the cross. I know, and I know it was the blood for me. Oh, yes, he hung his head and died. Yes, he did. He hung his head and died. Yes, he did. He hung his head and died for me. Oh, yeah. So one day when I was lost, my Jesus, he died on the cross. I know. And I know it was the blood for me. Just a listen. And he's coming, he's, he's coming, coming back again. He's coming, he's coming back again. He's coming, he's coming back again for me. Oh, yeah. One day when I was lost, my Jesus he died on the cross. I know, and I know it was the blood for me. I know, I know, I know it was the blood. I know, I know it was the blood. I know, and I know it was the blood for me. Oh, oh, oh. one day when I was lost, Jesus he died on the cross. I know, and I know. 
it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God for the blood. Thank you for that sanctified blood. Hallelujah. That glorified blood. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I know it was the blood that saved me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And now we will have our confessions of the heart. If you would stand, if you're able, and read them with me. I am somebody. The word of God declares that the book of the law shall not depart from out of my mouth. I will meditate on it day and night and observe to do all that is written therein. Accordingly, I shall make my way prosperous and I shall have good success. Romans 8 declares, I am somebody. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God for I have been redeemed from the curse of the law I have been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. I am blessed. I am blessed. Deuteronomy 28 tells me, I am blessed coming out. I am blessed going in. I am the head and not the tail. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am above and not beneath. The fruit of my womb is blessed. The seed of my loins are blessed. I am the seed of Abraham. Therefore, all nations shall be blessed by me. I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. I am covered with his feathers, and under his wings I will rejoice. He is my shield and my buckler. I will not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor of the terror that cometh by night. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, and it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. I will keep in remembrance that he will give his angels charge over me, lest I dash my foot against a stone. And with long life shall he satisfy me, because he is the most high, even my habitation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, thank you, God. Hallelujah, thank you, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, I know it was the blood. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to thank God who has allowed us to gather again and assemble ourselves in the sanctuary here, as well as on social media. Amen. We're grateful for one and all. Whichever way you've joined us today, amen? And, and we're just so glad that we can worship together. Amen. That's what we're here for. Amen. We're here to worship amen. our God, amen? amen? We also want to thank everyone for supporting our ministry at Abiding Faith. We thank you for your prayers and for your financial support, amen? amen. You know, this is a ministry, amen? amen. And, 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 and we need resources. Yeah. The first resources we need is you. I said you. Not Sue, but you. Amen? We need you, so we're thankful for you. And then we're thankful that you're that for, for, for the financial support that you give us, oh God, with your tithes, with your offerings. Amen? And I know that in these trying times, 
trying financial times, amen, you know, you have to be committed yes. huh, to give, yes. amen. Yes. Huh? But thank God, you know, God. Can, you can't be God-giving, can you? <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to tell you that your, your, your faithfulness in giving is much appreciated here at the ministry. We have once again uh, begun to support a, sp a sponsored child and our sponsored child, Rosa, from the Republic of the Congo. On your offering envelope, if you're using one, uh, 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 you'll see a place uh, to, uh, not only to bring your tithes and your offerings, but you can also uh, uh, give into the mission field. And that's, what, that's where that money goes, to support Rosa, our, 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 uh, our uh, uh, sponsored child from the Republic of the Congo. Okay? Uh, please, as you give your offerings, help us to support her, please. You can also bring your tithes and offerings with you, or you can send them via mail, via Cash App. If you use Cash App, um, the, uh, you, you have to use the dollar sign, capital A, capital F, capital M, small letters, EB, 2010. Let me repeat that again. The call sign for Cash App is, is, cap, uh, is the dollar sign, Capital A F M, capital A, capital F, capital M, small case E B, 2010. Okay. You can also give via PayPal, you know, or place them in the offering cans in the rear or the front of the church. And at this particular time, we also have an usher with an offering can up front. And you can also uh, uh, at the pulpit. Okay. Whatever is most convenient for you. Amen. And we want to take a moment to pray for the offering, if you will. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much because truly, whatever we have to give, you have given us. It comes right from your hand to our hand, oh God. And, and, and we thank you, Lord, because you've taught us that we have to keep it open hand, amen, so both to receive and to give away, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, for all that you do for us, oh God. We ask you to bless this offering. Bless those, oh Lord, who handle the funds, O oh God. Give them wisdom, Father God, O oh Lord. We thank you for their faithfulness, O oh God, in handling the, these affairs for us, O oh God, and for the ministry. We ask you to bless all who participate. I mean, bless all who participate, Lord, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. And if any, O oh God, are, are bereft of funds, O oh God, we ask you to bless them, O oh God, O oh Lord. Because truly, O oh God, if you give to them, they'll have something to give, oh God, right. even as we do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And now, we, once again, we ask you to receive our announcements. Okay. Well, we're going to have our announcements now. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. Here at the church, on Friday the 16th, we will be having a movie night. We'll be showing the movie Heaven's War. So we ask that you would plan to come out of, uh, and be with us on this night of family fun and fellowship. Amen. For Black History Month, our youth will be making special presentations during the morning service. On February the 21st, excuse me, 25th, our youth along with Culture Dance Company will present a special tribute. Also on February 25th, we will be having our prayer and fellowship dinner following the morning service. Amen? Okay. I want y'all to keep up with all of this now. Abiding faith will be closed March 
the third. You got that? Because we will be traveling to Tradstone Baptist Church for their 11 a.m. service. And we want everyone to go with us. Pastor Joyce will be preaching. Dinner will be served after service. So if you plan on attending, we need you to sign up. There's a sheet in the back of the church. They need to know how many of us are coming so they can prepare adequately. Amen? On Friday, excuse me, March the 15th, I'm free. A testimony, a testimony and healing service will be held here at the church at 7 p.m. This is a time of sharing, praise and worship, and prayer. So begin to pray for God's manifested glory during this service for healing and deliverance. We want him to move in a mighty way. Not only do we want you to come, but we want you to pray. Let's start praying now. To those of you who are struggling with anything, Join us during this time of fellowship prayer and bring somebody with you. If you're not struggling with anything at this time, come out anyway to encourage those who are. Amen. 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 Baptism services will be held on Sunday, March the 17th. Again, baptism services will be held on Sunday March the 17th, after morning service. Anyone desiring to be baptized should see Sister Latanya Reed for further instructions. So preparations must be made. So please contact her as soon as possible. Amen? Amen. Art classes are, will be offered to Abiding Faith uh, members starting March the 26th. Classes will be held on Tuesdays from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Taught by our own deacon, Joanne Elliott Pugh. She will be teaching the fundamentals of drawing and painting. So sign up now. Challenge your inter-artist. We all got one. For more information and to register for the class, Contact Deacon Joe at afm.equippingbelievers at gmail.com. So, sorry to say this, but all the spaces for the Daniel play at Sight and Sound on Feb uh, September 20th to the 21st has been filled. So we thank you for your quick response. For those of you who are going, your down payment of $70 is due by June, uh, excuse me, by March 24th. Our weekly services. We have prayer every morning at 6 a.m. via our conference line. Join us. The number is 978-990-5101 with the access code of 256225 pound sign. Sunday school is held every week at 9.30 here at the church. Our children's church starts at 11.30, and this is a ministry designed especially for youth ages 3 to 12. The Health and Wellness Ministry bowls on Mondays at 6.30. We bowl at the Crafton Bowling Lanes. Everyone is welcome. If you don't have your own bowling shoes, you will need $4.25 to get some. All other fees are paid by the ministry, so join us. This is a great way to exercise while having fun. We have Bible study on Tuesday mornings at 9.30 via Facebook Live. We're still studying the book of Genesis. So if you want to uh, join us, contact us at afm.equippingbelievers at gmail.com. Noonday prayer is every Wednesday from 12 to 1. 
we invite you to join us because God has been hearing and answering our prayers. And lastly, the Willie M. Johnson School of Bible and Ministry meets on Thursdays at 6.30 here at the church as well as on Zoom. Amen? Amen. Praise and worship. Amen. 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 And we're going to introduce ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise ministry. How many know we serve a God who's awesome? Yes. Amen. Just a couple of you know it. Huh? God is an awesome yes. God. Yes. Our God is an awesome, awesome. God. Amen. Amen. Sing with us. Hallelujah. celebrate the greatness of our God. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. So the worship song that says this, our God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. Come on, our God is awesome. My 
awesome. Awesome God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. He's my provider. He's my deliverer. He's my healer. He's my protector. He is my God. He is awesome. An awesome God. Hallelujah. How great is our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, God. God. Oh, bless you, Lord. You're great. You're great. You're great. Yes. Great. And you're greatly to be great. Yes. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Yes.
God. We Hallelujah. serve a great God. Hallelujah. We serve how great, a great God. Yes, how great Lord. you are, Lord. How sing. great Hallelujah. you are. Hallelujah. How great you are, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory God. Thank you, Lord. We sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. Praise your name. Yes. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Stop your voice and say now. Oh 
Hallelujah. Death couldn't hold him down. Mm. Death couldn't hold him down then. And he can't hold him down now. He's a risen king. He's seated in majesty. He's our God. Amen. He's our creator God. <laughs> He's a God with infinite wisdom. He's a God with an intelligent spirit. He's the God of gods. And we know there are many little gods around. But there's no God like our God. Amen. You can look all around you and you'll not find one like our God. Amen. Because he's awesome. Hallelujah. He's ruler. And guess what? He's even in control of this earth realm. Hallelujah. Satan might be the prince and power of the air, but God, our God, is the God of the universe. He's supreme, the supreme ruler. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God he is. Amen. We ought to be shouting because we serve a good God. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Great God, great God, great God. Woo, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but can't nobody do me like Jesus. Woo, I love him today, and I thank him for loving me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Awesome God. Hallelujah. And he knows all about you. Knows all about your troubles. Knows all about your sorrows. Amen. And guess what? He's a way maker. He'll bring you out of all that stuff. Just put your trust in him. Just believe in him. Hallelujah. And if you don't know him, get to know him. Hallelujah. And who can't serve a God like we serve? Amen. Whew. Some beautiful songs today. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a word for you. If you turn with me to 1 Corinthians, a very familiar passage of scripture, 11th chapter. Amen. I'm going to begin at the 17th verse. Amen. Reading down to the 30th. In the NIV translations on the overhead, if you want to look up and read. Hallelujah. Along with me as I read out loud. And it reads thus in the following directives. I have no praise for you. For your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it. Paul is talking to the Corinthians. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, 
whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. But those who eat and drink without discerning the body of eat and drink judgment on themselves. And this is why many among you are weak and sick. Hallelujah. And a number of you have fallen asleep. This is the word of God. Amen. For the people of God, you may be seated in the presence of God. Lord, I pray that you would let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So as we come together on this Second Communion Sunday in the year 2024, I want to talk to you about the church coming together in communion and being on one accord. The scripture lets us know when the church comes together in unity, the spirit of God is poured out in abundance. And God is calling the church to be unified. Amen. And because the church is unified, we should be like-minded and not a disconnected people. Because this is Communion Sunday, I want to talk to you about the church coming together in communion. The scripture of the text, the text of scripture that we're using today is for the most of you, if not all, a familiar passage. We read and preach from it often on Communion Sunday. God has brought us together to commune with one another uh, in commemoration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who shed his blood on Calvary's cross for our sins. So here we are again as we press onward and upward. The church is coming together, partaking in communion of what is known as the Lord's Supper. While there are a number of ways we consider the service of the Lord's Supper, today I want us to focus on what Paul teaches in this text about the corporate aspect of the Lord's Supper. When you read this first book of Corinthians, you'll note that the church at Corinth was a source of great concern for Paul. In the first 10 chapters, he was addressing many serious problems in the church, ranging from incest to immorality. But let us not be too critical of the Corinthian church, because like many in the church today, they brought many of their beliefs and habits of life into the church with them. Some of us do the same thing, amen, coming to the church and we bring what we think churches should be about all of our bad habits amen and they needed to be taught how to come together in community with one another just as a church today must be taught how to come together in unity when we come to Christ scripture teaches us that we become new creatures in Christ that old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Amen. So what this should say to us is that the spiritual mindset is new to us when we are first saved. Amen. Amen. And it takes growth for us to develop into spiritual maturity. In order to understand the finished work of Christ and to understand that we are saved by the blood of Christ, we must come with a sincere confession of faith in Christ Jesus. However, because of the lack of maturity, we bring our old beliefs and habits into the church. Nonetheless, the Lord welcomes us to come just as we are. Amen. And should, that should bring us some comfort. 
You don't have to be like anybody else. Just come just as you are. Amen. He'll make the change in you. Amen. The problem in this 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians is a different matter. You see, in the church at Corinth, many of them had no respect for the Lord's Supper or the communion. Too many Corinthians were making a mockery of the Lord's Supper. Right here, right here, Paul had to correct the abuse of the Lord's Supper. They may have asked the question that many in the church today ask. What was so important about the Lord's Supper or the communion? Why is this little ceremony important to us and to most of the Christian church? Well, first of all, it's important because the Lord's Supper was instituted by the Lord Jesus before he died. Jesus and his disciples ate a meal, sang psalms, read scripture, and prayed. Then Jesus took two traditional parts of the Passover meal, the passing of bread and the drinking of wine, and this gave them new meaning as representations of Christ's body and blood. And he used the bread and wine to explain the significance of what he was about to do on the cross. In the early years of the church, the Lord's Supper was held in connection with a normal supper. Church would get together for fellowship, and they would observe the Lord's Supper during that time. In those early days, the Lord's Supper was celebrated, and this celebration included a feast or a fellowship meal followed by communion. And they called it a love feast. Huh. May have started out with the Corinthians doing it right and for the right reasons, but now they were making a mockery of the Lord's Supper during the love feast. Although Paul had committed the Corinthians for remembering what he had taught them. In the 17th verse, he tells the church that he had no praise for them since their meetings did more harm than good. And we know from the earlier passages that there were divisions, and these divisions were magnified at their coming together for the Lord's Supper. You see, the richer members would bring their food and drink and not share it with the poor members because they would eat and get drunk while the poor people did without, the Lord's Supper lost, had lost all meaning at Corinth. It was just another chance for the people to magnify their divisions. It seemed they had no reverence for what the Lord's Supper represented. Huh. The text lets us know that at the fellowship meal at the church in Corinth, the people brought food to share with the rich, bringing more food than the poor. And instead of sharing equally among everyone, some went hungry while others got drunk. And they were not concerned about celebrating communion. Verse 22 of the text, Paul asked the question, Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Paul had no praise for them concerning the issue regarding how to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Let them know when they came together, it was not the Lord's Supper they were eating. They were merely satisfying their hunger. And Paul wanted to know why they didn't just eat and drink at their own houses. Let them know that what they were doing was despicable. That it was bringing shame to the church of God. 
oh, they claimed to be taking the Lord's Supper, but what they were doing had no reverence for it. They went through the ceremony, but there was nothing real about it. They went through the emotions, but there was no substance to it. What they were doing was treating the Lord's Supper with contempt because they were doing it all wrong. Now, how does this relate to us today? Unlike the church at Corinth, we don't usually have a fellowship dinner with our Lord's Supper or our communion. And we are not drunk when we take the Lord's Supper. Therefore, you can say that this doesn't speak to us today, right? However, we can dangerously come close to the Corinthian church today if we forget the meaning of the Lord's Supper. We can have the ceremony and there not be anything real to it. We can go through the motions and not really have our hearts in it. We can make a mockery of it by disregarding its true meaning. But in order to observe the Lord's Supper properly, we need to be reminded of what we are doing it for. And although the people brought food to share, text lets us know that some of them had their own private suppers. This lack of unity caused the believer to lose the real meaning behind what they were to remember. Paul lets them know that when they come together, they, there were divisions among them. So he condemned their actions and he reminded the church of the real purpose of the Lord's Supper. He said they should come to this meal desiring to fellowship with other believers and to come to the fellowship meal with the right frame of mind. To come with the wrong attitude is to bring judgment upon themselves. It's a sad thing to turn a blessed time of unity and thanksgiving into a time of division and judgment. Paul didn't want this to be the case in Corinth. And for sure, we don't want it to be the case in the church today. Nonetheless, to deliberately sin in the observance of the Lord's Supper is a sin that brought with it severe divine discipline. When the people in the church develop into self-willed divisions, these self-willed divisions are destructive to the congregation. Somebody ought to say amen. Paul addressed this issue in the text because these decisions were hurtful during a time of fellowship. Coming together to commune with one another should have brought the believers together, not separated them. So to solve the problem in Corinth, Paul advised the believers when they gather to celebrate the Lord's Supper to wait for each other. That's why we drink together. That's why we eat together. We wait for each other. Amen. And this is why we take communion together. And this is what Paul was addressing here in chapter 11. So keep our reverence, uh, to keep our reverence for this ordinance. From time to time, we need to review just what the Lord's Supper means. And this is why we bring you a communion message on Communion Sunday. Amen. These verses remind us of the meaning of the Lord's Supper. What Paul is saying to us, verses 23 through 26 do, he says, For I receive from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Amen. Paul wasn't stingy with what he got. I can say what, Pastor, and I receive from the Lord. We like to pass it on to you. Amen. If we can be benefited by it, so can you. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body. Huh. It wasn't the physical body of Jesus, but it represented 
his broken body. Amen. Which is for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. That's why we do it. To remember the brokenness of his body. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Because remember, this is called the Lord's Supper. We're not talking about that feast of meal that they had prior to communion. Amen. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. It ain't no special time that you can take communion. We just happen to do it on the first of every month. But you can do it every day. Whenever you do it, whenever you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. But whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And church, I come to tell you, he is coming back again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Corinthian Christians were gathered together to observe the Lord's Supper. And today, the church comes together in common communion, partaking of the Lord's Supper. And we see that as a style of worship. Just because you may have a different style of worship does not mean that the other styles are wrong to the point that we should not work together for the cause of Christ. When the church comes together, we should be able to commune with one another because we are one body in Christ. The text teaches that Jesus Christ instituted the Lord's Supper. And you can see this in verses 23 through 24. We know that the Lord's Supper was held the night before the cru crucifixion when Jesus broke the bread and passed the cup to his disciples while they were in the upper room. Then he said, do this in remembrance of me. He also said, this is my body, which is for you. He allowed his body, church, to be broken for you. Hallelujah. For me. So that we would have an opportunity to be redeemed back to the Father. If we put our faith and trust in what he has done. Some translations read, this is my body broken for you. We know that. There were no bones broken, according to the scripture. But he was broken for you. Whipped him, beat him all night long. Put a crown of thorns on his head that the blood just comes streaming down. Took torture and torment for you. So that you can be redeemed back to the Father. Amen. Just for you, just for me. Hallelujah. So he said, all he wants you to do is remember when you come together and partake of this Lord's Supper, remember, get a vivid picture back on that cross of Calvary where our Lord and Savior Jesus hung. Hallelujah. Somebody said they him high until he suffered, bled, and died. Bread of the supper to remind us of his body, to remind us that he gave his body for us. He gave his back to the whip. He gave his legs and strength to carry the cross to Calvary. He gave his feet to the nails of the cross. He gave his hands to the nails of the cross. He gave his head to the crown of thorns. He gave his mind, his emotions, his pain, and his entire body on that cross. So when you take the bread, remember the broken body of Jesus Christ. Verse 25 tells us in the same way. 
cup reminds us of Jesus' blood that was poured out for us. He poured out his blood to the whip. Amen. You can see the whip just ripping his skin apart. And his blood just flowing out. He poured out his blood, his life's blood to the nails. Can you just imagine the pain he suffered when the nails was pierced in his hand and his feet? He poured out his life blood to the thorns that was pressed on his head. He poured out his life blood to the soldier's spear in his side. The Bible says the blood came streaming down. It was blood and water. Hallelujah. You need the water for life. Hallelujah. The blood is for cleansing. The water gives life. Amen. It's Jesus is the water of life. Amen. Hallelujah. When you drink the cup, remember the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember when we observe the Lord's Supper, we are proclaiming the death of Jesus Christ. Verse 26 says, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remember, church, why he gave up his body. He did it for you, just for you. He gave up his body on the cross for you. He suffered all the physical pain and humiliation for you. And he gave his body in your place. He suffered for the wrath of your sin on the cross because he had no sin. There was no sin in him. Amen. But he took on the sins of the world. He took your place and redeemed his body just for you. Remember why he shed his blood, why he poured it out for you. Because Hebrews 9, 22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So it got, God requires a blood sacrifice. Amen. Jesus fulfilled that requirement with his own blood. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that we are forgiven through the shed blood of Christ. That's some shouting stuff right there. We are forgiven. For this reason, the Lord's Supper is an important Christian ordinance. It's a reminder of what Jesus has done for us. So when we come together in communion, we should have that on our minds. It should invoke our and reverence from us with an important event, such an important event. We should prepare our hearts correctly as we observe it. Want to know why we say the prayer of confession so that we can come to him clean. Amen. Because Paul tells us we should treat the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner. See, some of the Christian Corinthians were observing the Lord's Supper in what Paul called in verse 27 an unworthy manner. Unworthy means irreverently or as, uh, as common. We can't treat the Lord's Supper as a common meal. Amen. Remember, it's no ordinary meal. They were treating the Lord's Supper as an ordinary meal without any reverence. What we're about to do is not your ordinary supper or snack. It's not a time for cutting up, for laughing, or for talking to your neighbor about this afternoon's plan. What this supper symbolizes is of the utmost importance to all who have faith in Jesus Christ. It's a time of reverent reflection of the pain and the agony that Jesus suffered for you and for me. So we should examine ourselves before we take the Lord's Supper. 
Verse 28 tells us that to examine ourselves before we eat of the bread and drink from the cup. That's the word. Paul's call to the Christian, Corinthians to examine themselves was a corporate call to the entire church. Not just them in the New Testament days, but for us today. And what was happening is that the most affluent would not wait for the poor people, as we said before, of the church. And by the time the poor people came, the supper, most of the food was gone. You know how we do. I remember when we were kids. We give the best to the ones we think that are the elite. Amen. My brother hated the bishop. My oldest brother. Donna, he didn't like the bishop. Every Sunday the bishop came to dinner. Every Sunday the bishop got the best parts of the chicken. See, at that time the wings weren't important like they are today. Hmm. The bishop ate the breasts. He ate the big thigh, the fat leg. He left the wings and the necks and the backs for us. My brother hated the bishop. <laughs> His food was sparse back then. Amen. Bishop Harris was a big man. Oh, 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 oh. Mother Murphy, this is a wonderful meal. My brother hated. <laughs> he hated the bishop. This is what this church reminds me of. We say it, serve the best to those who are elite and of statue of some kind and and, and forget about the little poor, because we had to eat the necks and the backs. That last part to go over the fence. <laughs> and the wings, which weren't as important as wings today. Amen. Because there wasn't a whole lot of meat on the wings. Amen. My brother, rest his soul, hated the bishop. And this warning that Paul was giving was presented to them so that the consequences would be dire to those who would sin against God by holding back from the poor. As we come together today, we must ask ourselves the question, am I guilty of the sin of pride that befell the Corinthian church? Do we think that we are better than anyone else? So what's in your hearts? Are you like the Corinthians who were divided and fussing? Now I tell you to take care of that division and fussing now before you take the Lord's Supper. Is there some sin that you have not confessed to the Lord and repented? I come to tell you to take care of that confession and repentance now before you take the Lord's Supper. Are you not in a serious and reverent frame of mind? Take care of that right now before you take the Lord's Supper. Heed the Bible's warning. As verse 30 reads, this is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Because the Lord takes the Lord's Supper very seriously. He expects his people to take it seriously. So today as we come together in communion, I ask you to remember Jesus Christ. One who shed his blood for your salvation. Remember the cross, which means forgiveness. Remember, hallelujah.
the cross means eternal life for you. And never forget that the Lord's Supper helps us remember the new covenant of Christ's blood. Jesus' death on the cross ushered in the new covenant or agreement that God, uh, between God and us. Amen. And now we can personally approach God. We can communicate with him because of what Christ has done. The new covenant solves two problems that separated people from God uh, that the old covenant could not do. The problem of guilt because of sin. Jesus solved this problem by shedding his blood to take our sin and guilt upon himself. And the other problem was rebellion and our tendency to run from God and follow the ways of the world brings about destruction. So God solved this problem by writing his law in our hearts. The new covenant creates a new relationship between God and his people. And Paul is using Jesus' exact words from that night knowing that the new covenant completes rather than replaces. It fulfills everything the old covenant looked forward to. So don't forget the Lord's Supper strengthens our fellowship with Christ and with one another. At Corinth, some serious abuses had crept in this common meal. And as a result, they were doing more harm than good to the church and one thing, they were, there were various cliques in the church, and people ate with their own crowd instead of fellowshipping with the whole church family. We need to do away with the cliques. Amen. How about when we come to a fellowship, when we invite others to a fellowship dinner here, which we will be having every fourth Sunday, amen, up to September, right? How about sitting with someone you don't know while you have fellowship dinner and get to know them. Welcome them in. Amen. Like we welcome our visitors in. They come in and sup with us. Hallelujah. And we sup with you. Amen. No special people in here in God's eyes because you're all special to him. One thing hmm, we need to stop doing is having people come and think that we are so much greater than they. Because there's none great but God. Amen. Visions at the dinner were evidence of the problems they had in the church. People who are saved by the blood of Jesus and under this new covenant have the law of Christ written on their hearts. And we ought to desire to follow it. That's why I believe Paul said you have to believe, amen, in your heart. You confess with your mouth, but you believe in your heart. And I'm, ta I'm not talking about the little ticker talker that keeps us moving. But the heart of God is the mind. And that's where Satan loves to enter in, the mind. Put that evil thought in your mind. That's why we need to let our mind be the mind of Christ Jesus. And no longer be conformed to the ways of the world and the mind that the world has tried to draw us into. But have a renewed mind. Hallelujah. And look to him. Amen. We need to get the world out of the church out of the church, I'm talking about the people, and bring the world into the church so that we can help them get saved. Amen. Stop trying to be like them. Let them want to be like you. Uh, amen. The people of Corinth would have observed the covenant relationship they had with God and with one another. There would, they, would, they wouldn't have had a problem at all. 
So I come to tell you always remember that the Lord Supper joins believers as a part of the universal community. Let them begin by stating that there is truth to the fact that this new covenant joins us together as a universal community. Amen. Regardless of denomination, one thing we got to know, if you don't know it now, there's no denominations in heaven. Hallelujah. No Baptists, no Presbyterians, no Methodists. We all the church of God. We're the bride of Christ. Amen. Jesus is the head and the husband. Hallelujah. And both men and women are the wives. Amen. The bride. That's the only time it's going to be united as the bride. Men and women, the bride is in heaven. Ain't no men brides down here on earth. I'm sorry. No men brides. You can marry whoever you want to, but they will not be the bride. Amen. They're just another man. You're going against God's principles. Amen. I'm going to speak the truth because I know the truth is what makes us free. Amen. And we don't have to stand for wrong. We need to stand for what is right in God's eyes. Amen. So here at Abiding Faith, as we come together partaking of the Lord's Supper, it's going to help us to remember the new covenant of Christ's blood. And abiding faith coming together, partaking of the Lord's Supper, will strengthen our fellowship with Christ and with one another. And in abiding faith coming together, partaking of the Lord's Supper, joins us as a part of the university community. So, as we press onward and upward, amen, the church is coming together in communion which reminds us of Christ's death on that old rugged cross, reminds us that he was buried and rose again on the third day, and he's coming back again. Amen. And this is all according to the scriptures. This is not Joyce, Pastor Joyce talking, but this is the word of God that speaks to our spirit, man. Amen. So remember, somebody say remember. remember. Say it now, remember. Remember. What our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done for us as we partake of this Lord's Supper, representing his broken body and shed blood. And we should all have one goal in mind as we journey through this barren land. That's to be in communion with one another in eternity. Huh? What a day of rejoicing that would be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing, I wish I could hoot, and shout the victory. Hallelujah. When we all get to glory, hallelujah, that's when it's going to be a good time. And th listen, you don't have to worry about getting sleepy because there's no night there. All day long, you're going to be praising and worshiping. You're asking the question, how can I praise God in this tired body all day long? Well, you ain't going to be in this body. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because you're going to have a glorified body. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's going to be a sanctified body, a body that can withstand everything that God has for us. Amen. And we're just going to stand on the promises. Amen. That he has made for us. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be victory there. No divisions, no cliques, no denominations. Just as the Father and the Son is one, we will all be one with the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's something to get happy about. That's something to shout about. Hmm. And I know we all want to go to heaven and nobody really wants to die. But that's the only way you're going to get there. Because this flesh and blood will not enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. When we all get there, we're going to sing and shout the victory. Oh, Donna, can you get on the drums for me? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. 
when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, put that back up there. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, thank you for another opportunity to come together to glorify your holy name. Pray blessings upon these, your people today. Let the preach word spoke to the heart of every listener. Thank you for moving us onward and upward as we commune together today. Thank you for your divine love and protection that you have placed over us. Thank you, O oh God, that you have given us the hope of glory, of everlasting, O oh God, life, peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for the word that brings healing, deliverance, and salvation for those who do not know you in the pardoning of their sin. Just want to thank you, Lord, for your resurrection power for the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hallelujah. I pray that we can be a witness to somebody who don't know you today in the pardoning of their sins. We just want to thank you forever and forever and forever for all you've done for us. We worship and adore you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. Come on, give God a praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. How many did the word touch today? Amen. 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 Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, today is a good day to ask God to come into your heart if you don't know him and the pardon of your sins because Jesus wants you to be saved. He took on too much for you not to be saved. Amen. All you have to do is believe on him. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And he said, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So if you don't know Christ in the pardon of your sin, whether you are in this sanctuary or in social media out there listening to us, we ask you to ask Jesus to come into your heart today. Because scripture says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Simple as that. And I'm going to ask you, is there one today here that have not yet entered into a right relationship with Jesus Christ and you desire to be saved today? Bow your heads with me and pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Forgive me for my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I ask you to save me today. Give me your resurrection power to live my life for you. And then I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time and have trusted in God today, you are saved. That's how simple it is. Amen. Just tell somebody, walk up to somebody and say, I'm saved. 
That's the confession. I'm saved. I, I gave my life to Jesus Christ today, and I'm saved. Amen. I believe, and I'm saved. I received, and I'm saved. Whatever got you saved, tell them you got saved today. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are on social media and you have made this declaration of faith, call us and let us know. Amen. We can give you the number. It's 412-600-0004. 412-600-0004. Or you can send us an email at afm.equippingbelievers at gmail.com. Hallelujah. Just leave us a comment letting us know how we can contact you. And if you want to be a part of this Abiding Faith family, hallelujah, you are welcome. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Join in with us. Hallelujah. Help us to keep on keeping on up this. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Journey of faith. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. 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 Somebody, come on. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. There's a song that come on and praise the Lord with me, isn't it? Hallelujah. Let's prepare our hearts. We just went a little bit over, but we're going to prepare our hearts for our communion. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As we enter our communion service, let us prepare our hearts to partake of the Lord's Supper together. As we commune together, let us remember the sacrifice our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made for us on the cross. Hear the words of Paul when he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We celebrate the partaking of the Lord's Supper by remembering the Lord's death on the cross, remembering that Jesus Christ sacrificed his blood and shed his blood in our place. So let us prepare our hearts and minds as we partake of the communion. For those in the sanctuary, we have passed out the communion cups. If you have not received one, please let us know by raising your hand. Amen. For you who are listening with us via social media, I ask that you get a cracker or a piece of bread, some juice or water, and join us as we commemorate our Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for our coming together to partake of the Lord's Supper. Bless now the bread and the cup, which is a symbol of your broken body and shed blood for our sins. We thank you, Father, for your sacrifice. As we come and commune together, partaking of the Lord's Supper, we pray your blessings upon each of us. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of communing with you and with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before we partake of the 
Lord's Supper, I ask you to pray with me the prayer of confession, which is on the overhead. Amen. Let's pray together. Have mercy upon us, almighty God, for our hard-heartedness, our pride, our self-sufficiency, the vows, the secret faults, the words of anger and bitterness, the strife and temptation, and for receiving your blessing without saying thank you. Forgive us now, have mercy on us now, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We do confess these things and so much more in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us commune together. We're not going to be like the Corinthian church and go ahead of one another. Amen. <coughs> we take your wafer. Amen. Scripture says the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. This represents the bread, this broken body. Amen. When he gave thanks, he broke it. Let's break it together. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Let the church say amen. amen. This stuff don't hold up long, huh? Mm. Woo. <laughs> ah, I know it was the blood. <laughs> I know it was the blood. That's a good one. Pastor starting that song out. Me. Come on. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know it was blood for me. I know it was blood. I know it was blood. Come on, sing. I know it was blood for me. Oh, one day when I was, oh, he died on the cross. I know, I know it was the blood for me it was it was my savior's blood it was my savior's blood it was my savior's blood for me oh yeah one day when i was lost he died on the cross i know it was the blood for me. there was no benediction on the eve of the supper Matthew said in his gospel that we should, uh, when, they, when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So we're singing this hymn and going out into the Mount of Olives, rejoicing, hallelujah, in the Lord. Amen. And let's stand together and declare that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus.